Good evening. Um, welcome to this session of uh, uh, headache talk. Um, as you know, I've been uh, working in University Hospital County in Warwickshire since 2008, and I still very vividly remember I gave a face to face talk in, in your seminar at uh, the Nafil Hospital. That is about eight or nine years ago. Uh, now we are in a different uh, territory with the uh, you know, kind of lockdown, COVID, pandemic, and now we have chosen uh, the, the shortcut of uh, being on MS Teams, which has got its advantages, but at the same time, I would call there are some disadvantages as well. Anyway, without any ado, you know, we'll, let's just move on. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going to touch on generally, but uh, I would uh, welcome your questions. I'm very pleased to see one of my colleagues working along with me, Dr. Sabine Dedner. <clears throat> um, uh, she's a GP with special interest in neurology, particularly headaches, epilepsy, and she probably would like to develop further neurology interest as well. She, she's she's with us. She's uh, listening to, to the talk. Um, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm pleased with that as well. So um, I'm going to talk in general about you know, how the impact of headache is classification and how to take a uh, thanks Sabine and uh, history taking some of the red flags you need to look for and and what is common what is rare and when to refer and when not to refer and and uh, what treatment you can provide in primary care uh, what is a nice guideline say about headaches uh, botox uh, i'll touch upon botox great oxygen block which i'm a big fan of uh, cgip antagonist one of the novel treatment in, in migraines, which is a self-administered injection by the patients. And uh, at the end, I would like to give you some case scenarios which uh, I want you to answer and tell me the answers. There you go. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm not going to, uh, you know, some of the slides I'll just, uh, you know, uh, quickly, you know, have a glimpse. Um, and you, you can read through it because uh, these are things, statistics, you know. So just just these slides shows how important common this illness is, how um, common man and woman affected by these conditions. Um, it is an underdiagnosed, or undertreated condition. I'm sure you will agree with that as well. And it's a very, very in the in the global, you know, um, burden disability score in 2019. You can see it remains second among the world's causes of disability and first among young women. And uh, a severe disability, I mean, when you have a bad attack, I, I suffer from migraine. If you have a bad attack, you can't function. You have to get to the bed. You need to, you know, stop everything and and, and if possible, go home or do, don't do anything. So very, very disabling. Um, so disability from pain and non-headache symptoms will come to that. Attacks not always effectively treated with simple painkillers. And it's important to find appropriate and reliable treatment for acute attacks, effective strate strategies to prevent attacks, and treatment to prevent the non headache symptoms. So the successful treatment rely on a foundation of good lifestyle. I'm a very big advocate of uh, lifestyle recommendations, and uh, Sabine knows it very well. A uh, good quality, refreshing sleep is extremely vital plus minus preventative strategies. I, I say plus minus preventative strategies. There are patients, believe it or not, come back after changing their lifestyle, say, I didn't take your preventive medication, I am back to normal. So that is very, very music to use. So important concepts of migraine, a significant reversible, relatively invisible cause of disability. It is more than just a headache. It amplifies the normal bodily sensation into symptoms, may present with many symptoms, yet little, no headache. Migraine may commonly be kept going by inappropriate treatment, especially overuse of painkillers and caffeine. So, so that is an important thing, you know. I mean, some of the patient can go into status migraineus when it goes more than 72 hours, we call it status migraineus. And <clears throat> everybody will be thinking it is something different. It's not migraine because it's continuous. Why? Because either the patient or ourselves didn't look at it properly and tell the diagnosis, ask them to do from a lifestyle perspective and from a treatment perspective. Need for specific, reliable, effective treatment that target all the symptoms. As I told you, this is a big burden globally. 
one of the commonest and unrecognized causes of school absence, work absence, and affects people at prime of working and child rearing uh, lives. So in the UK, 25 billion working and school days lost each, each year, um, and 10% of the population visit the GP chair for neurological symptoms and migraine being by far the commonest. More sorely, reliant on over-the-counter medications without access to prescription drugs. Two out of three seek better treatment. Misdiagnosed rates for migraine reported to be as high as 60 to 80 percent. So again, again, the economic cost of migraine, as uh, you know, very clearly mentioned, the direct cost and indirect cost there. Um, it, it, it's, it's a big, big issue. It's a big issue, and it's a real headache in the neurology clinics. Even uh, I, I do uh, a specialist headache clinic and also a general neurology clinic. In any of the con my concerned colleagues, general neurology clinic, it, it varies. You know, anything between 20 to 50 percent of the neurology referrals could be headache. More common in women, and a, a small percentage of them go into chronic form. And I would say they go into chronic form because patient or us didn't deal it very well, or patient didn't approach us. So one to two persons suffer from chronic migraine, which is more than 15 days of headaches in a month. And uh, only 4.4 per uh, year consult GP for headache and 20% of sickness absence from uh, work. So headaches are classified into two types, primary and secondary. Secondary, obviously, you know, there is a secondary cause for it. Um, organic cause, but as a primary, you will have normal neurological examination and also uh, normal scans. So the two, three common uh, primary headaches are tension headache, migraine and cluster headache. But I will be telling you something more about a big umbrella of uh, headaches you know, called trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia. We, we call uh, in a, a pet name TAC, 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 TAC syndromes, trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia. So in that, uh, the three common ones are cluster headache, the next common is hemicrania continua, and the next common is paroxysmal hemicrania. We'll come to that uh, in a minute. Um, so I'm not going to dwell on too much on the me uh, uh, basic mechanism. So, so you need to understand this is a cascade of uh, events by inflammatory substance liberating the blood vessels and the brain. Then the inflammation of the blood vessels and surrounding issue on the outside of the brain and pain pathways are triggered. And we can see initially there is arterial activation and then the neurotransmitters, there are plenty of neurotransmitters, the worsening of the pain. There are two kind of major uh, kind of uh, uh, generators of, of pain. One is in the trigeminal cervical afferents and other one in the trigeminal cervical neurons. <coughs> And, and I, I think it's a bit too small for you. I, again, the, the, I, I just mentioned here the various neurogenic uh, uh, substances, um, neuropeptides, which are liberated in the system. One of the very, very important ones is CGRP, calcitonin gene-related peptide. Then you have got your uh, somatostatin, uh, you got your substance P, VIP, um, Uh, the, the vascular theory is intracerebral blood vessels causes vasoconstriction and which causes something called cortical spreading depression and causing aura. And the intracranial and ex extracranial blood vessels causing vasodilatation. And you need to understand that is the pain, that vasodilatation is the pain. And what sumatriptan does is vasoconstriction and it relieves the pain. And it can also cause coronary vasospasm. That is why trans has to be very, very carefully recommended, say after the age of 55 or 60 years of age. <clears throat> serotonin theory, there are lower levels uh, linked and specific serotonin receptors are found. And, and the present understanding is there is a neurovascular process in which the neural elements result in activation of the blood vessel, which in turn results in pain and further now activation. The first attack usually occurred during the adolescence or in, in girls in the menarche time. 
uh, uncommon to occur after the age of 40 for the very first time. But have you seen? Yeah, you can have you know, patients after the age of 40 as well. But you always take it with a pinch of salt. You need to exclude other conditions first. Migraine decreases with age, and I strongly believe that. If you ask me how many patients after the menopause you have got migraines, I would say very little. Around the perimenopausal phase, there will be a flurry of uh, attacks, usually not just by the estrogen going down, but there is a huge fluctuations in the estrogen as well at that time. That is why there is an escalation. That escalation lasts for you know, one or two years after the menopause, and then it has to subside or go away. Remission common after menopause, at fifth and sixth decades, 50 to 70 report of family history. Whenever you hear a family history, it's always a good news, yeah? So this is a, a classification where they, they divide into the chronic headaches and episodic headache. Episodic is anything less than 15 days a month. This chronic is anything, headaches more than 15 days a month. And also then you say the short duration headache, which is less than four hours, the long duration is uh, more than four hours. And always, you know, one of the important message I'm going to give you all will be the medication overuse a day. And mind you, you don't need to know patient is overusing because they can get all the medications over the counter. So unless you ask, you will never ever know patient is overusing medications. I'll come to that a bit later. Chronic migraine, about 60 to 75 percent times is unilateral, but it can be bilateral, pulsating, throbbing uh, in nature, moderate to severe intensity, aggravated by physical activity, or, or motion sensitivity or mechanophobia. Hemicrania continua is, the, is one of the, the trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia. It is also strictly unilateral, strictly unilateral, daily and continuous without pain-free periods with waxing and waning of symptoms. <clears throat> Moderate intensity, but with exacerbation pain and cranial autonomic dysfunction occurs. And, and the, it, it, the intermethacin is both diagnostic and therapeutic. You give the a patient intermethacin, the pain goes away, you cleanse the diagnosis. So there is an entity called new daily persistent headache where you have a definite day when it started and it hasn't gone away. And usually it can be due to various conditions, including migraine, but you need to exclude other uh, secondary causes as well, including uh, raised to pressure, low pressure headaches, uh, Chronic tension headache, I call them as the featureless headache. So what is the difference between a tension headache and migraine? I would say, essentially, tension headache tends to occur the latter half of the day, but the migraine usually the first half of the day. And uh, can they overlap? Yes, a, a patient with tension headache can also have migraine. A migraine patient can have tension headache. The migraine patient cannot continue what they're doing, whereas a tension type headache patient they normally would be able to carry on. So this is uh, about the, the the more than four hours headache. Migraine definitely comes there. Hemicrania continua, new daily persistent headache, and chronic tension type headache. So what happens in migraine? There is an amplification of stimulus sensitivity with uh, uh, throbbing and pounding pain, tenderness, allodynia, sensitivity to movement, noise, light, smell, and vestibular uh, symptoms. The autonomic features are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, increased urine, pallor, flushing, um, eye going red and runny, droopy eyes, blocked nostrils, runny nose, earfulness, bruising and swelling, and the brain dysfunction as we mentioned, aura, the mood change, the confusion, memory, fatigue, restlessness. It's very interesting, you know, the migraine can give rise to so many of the other neurological diseases, including stroke. So this is again another picture. I mean, you can see, you know, it can affect your mental state. Um, you can be very, uh, you yawn a lot, you, you become very angry, you know, rage, uh, confusion, hypermanic, sometimes an elated mood. And, and look at that, the second bed, including coma. A migraine can cause coma, particularly with a type of migraine called the Basla migraine. They can collapse like a, 
uh, epileptic patient, you can wrongly make a diagnosis of epilepsy. Mind you, not all the patients with migraine needs to have headache, but without headache, is rather challenging to make a diagnosis of migraine unless you have examined and you have done the uh, neuroradiological examination. And general, you know, kind of symptoms like lightheadedness, uh, scalp and facial edema, hair loss, um, it goes on. I mean, I have to say that you know, I would be very pleased to have you the PDF slides uh, of all the presentation. You know, we've got some cases at the end that also I'm happy to share with you. So you don't need to worry about scribbling or writing it down, yeah? So this is a website. You, you know, if you want to learn about any, any headache syndrome under the sun, the International Classification Headache Disorders by the Interna uh, you know, Headache Society uh, has given three classifications. Part one in, in, in this, in this uh, uh, website. Part one, primary headache. Uh, part two, tension, uh, sorry, part two, the secondary headaches, and then your uh, neurology, neurology form headaches, okay? So in, in the primary headache, which is the most common one, migraine, tension headache, trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia, which includes cluster headache, hemicrania, continuum paroxysmal hemicrania. So th these are some of the websites. If you, if you are interested in headaches or if you're struggling with headaches, you can share this particular migraine trust, uh, the migraine.com, org.uk and the headache.org.uk with, with your patients and the national migraine center.org.uk as well with the patient. And it, it, it's very, I mean, I don't know how many of you know about uh, uh, the Exeter Headache Clinic. Uh, the, David Kearney, you know, one of the uh, GP with extremely special interest, probably is, is, is one of the pioneers of uh, uh, gypsy in headaches uh, uh, from Exeter has made this wonderful website. It's so simple. So useful, um, I mean, patient orientated, GP orientated, wonderful. ExeterHeaddayClinic.org.uk. All of them, you know, the BASH guidelines, the British Association of Study of Headaches. So Headache.org.uk, it has got both clinician and patient part to it. So this is something you can look at it. So migraine, I mean, th these these are all basic things. You know all of it. I, I'm not going to go into the details. So what are the less common migraine phenomena or migraine terminologies? Vestibular migraine, I have to say, one of the commonest cause for uh, dizziness, unsteady gait, and, and vertigo uh, is migraine. And we call it as my vertiginous migraine, vestibular migraine, migraine-related vertigo, so many terminologies. And and some one of the unique thing about that headache may not be a predominant symptom. I have suffered from it. The very first time I suffered from vestibular migraine, I thought I had a stroke. But it it, it is a very uh, uh, treatable condition. Treat like any other migraine, and and uh, uh, it will get better. I tend not to use the word hemiplegic migraine to the patient or tell the patient, oh, you had a migraine like a stroke. The reason is. This is one of the uh, condition in migraine, they're present with many functional weakness. So I always use the terminology migraine with motor aura. This is my personal advice and personal take. I never ever tell the patient, oh, you had a migraine, which is like hemiplegic migraine. You know, mind you, you know, everybody, the, the biggest doctor these days is Google doctor. You say you had hemiplegic migraine, they go and read about it. I had, I saw a patient yesterday said, oh, should I be worried about a stroke? I said, no, no, you will be absolutely fine. Status migraineus, more than 72 hours, continuous migraine. Menstrual migraine, around the cycle. Ophthalmoplegic migraine, you got a paralysis of the extraocular muscles. Basilar type migraine, you got symptoms of a brainstem symptoms, like cranial nerves, like vertigo, like dizziness, like drowsiness, because you know the reticular formation can be affected. You can collapse with vestibular type migraine. The retinal, ocular, or visual migraine, silent migraine, echophalgic migraine. It's also called echophalgic migraine. So what is the main tool in diagnosing uh, migraine? It's not investigation. It is just history. So when you're sitting in the clinic uh, in, in a GP surgery, just ask yourself, am I dealing with this patient, a primary or secondary headache? Are there any red flags in the history of examination I need to be concerned or worried about? 
Dr. Thomas, there's um, a question in the uh, chat section. So it says, hi, Dr. Thomas, recently had a patient mid 50s and had migraine type headache with visual loss and some sort of speech problem lasted the evening. She went to bed. She was abroad, so didn't seek help. But as headache alone persisted, she called as um, as question mark HRT causing it. She never suffered with headache before, referred her to TIA clinic, got rejected despite symptoms. MRI done as results reported one month later and showed chronic infarct. What's your thoughts or advice on this in terms of diagnosis and management? Thank you. Um, well, there are a few points in that. Anybody with their aura more than an hour has to be considered as a TIA. So you're justified in sending the patient to a &E. Anybody with an aura, any aura, visual aura, speech aura, sensory aura, motor aura, more than one hour has to be considered as a TIA. So you need to alert, caution, and send the patient to for, for further studies or further evaluation. So HRT, um, can it cause in a kind of a, a stroke? Yeah, it is being considered as a warning or, or caution, uh, used with caution. But I always tell uh, my patient and, the, and, and yourself that if there are no other major secondary risk factors like cholesterol, lipid profile normal, not obese, not diabetic, not a smoker, uh, not having a family history of stroke or heart attacks. Um, you, you are, you, you, you're not, you know, too much in 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 the high risk group or, or the odds ratio, the risk ratio are not very high. But the patient needs to be warned. Uh, that that is only advice I would give. So that chronic infarct is you need to understand. You know, sometimes a general radiologist report infarct. So that may not be in the area of this specific patient's uh, symptomatology. That may be something which has happened 10 years ago. You need to understand migraine with aura patient can have infarcts in the brain, very tiny infarcts, small infarcts. So we call it as a migraineous findings. So that is migraine related white matter changes or small vessel changes. It is a well-known phenomenon, particularly with migraine with aura. Migraine without aura should not cause any white matter lesions on the brain. I hope I answered your question. So when you are when, when you you know dwell on the history, you know you ask the patient: Is your first uh, headache, worst headache, on a scale of one to ten? Where do you score your pain? Do you have headaches on a regular basis? Is the headache similar to the prior headaches? Has it changed in pattern? When does this begin? How did it start? Gradually, sudden or it's a thunderclap. Are you on any medication? If so, what medications? Do you take any medication? If so, what? Do you have any family history? Medication history is very important because some of the medication uh, you know, can cause headaches. Uh, some of the medications, when you, uh, they are on, you can't use uh, certain kind of medication. So it's, it's very important to, to have a history of the, uh, the, the, uh, the various comorbidities as well as medication. How long did the headache uh, last? What symptoms do you have before the headache starts? What symptoms do you have during the headache? What symptoms do you have right now? How often do you have headaches? Any autonomy features? You may be you may be just uh, asking me right now. Come on, you know we, we don't have the time to ask all these questions. But there are certain vital things, you know. I mean the 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 number of days in a month, intensity of the attack, any associated features. Uh, obviously, I know to look at the funders and make a diagnosis of papillary image is not that easy for um, in the general practice. Um, if the patient is complaining of uh, clumsiness, weakness, a sensory symptom, you need to examine them thoroughly. So these are the autonomic uh, features or parasympathetic features. Eyelid swelling edema, ptosis or droopy eyes, meiosis, contentile ingestion, red or watery eyes, tearing of the eye, nasal congestion, rhinorrhea, forehead and facial sweating. They are seated trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia, tax syndrome, TAC, tax syndrome, which are these. Cluster headache, proximal hemicrina, hemicrina continua, sung tsuna. I'll come to that. All unilateral headaches, you know. All trigeminal autonomic cephalalgias are unilateral. 
It can be seen to a very mild degree in migraine, but very mild. So I have just uh, in enumerated the list of uh, triggers. Um, triggers, uh, you know, to. Um, you know, anything under the sun can be a trigger. Right? To be honest with you, you know, um, I used to joke, um, you know, a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, they all can be triggers. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, yeah. So, so anything stress. You, if you ask me, the topmost one I would call stress, and then comes all your sleep, your your eating pattern, your caffeine, all sorts of things. So th this is a threshold theory. You can see if you have a menstrual cycle, miss lens, stresses of work, uh, long journey to work, and to and fro from work late night, it lowers the threshold. You, you provoke an attack. So this is a hormonal you know, kind of balance. You can see in the menstrual cycle, um, you know, this is the estrogen one, and this is the uh, progesterone one. And you can see in pregnancy, the estrogen is quite high. So, so when the estrogen is high, it, 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 it causes uh, uh, aura more. Whereas in, 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 when, you, when you have the menstrual cycle, menstruation happens, estrogen dips and that is why the, the menstrual migraine usually or almost always doesn't have aura with it whereas you can see a lot of aura symptoms in pregnancy right this is a fluctuation i'm talking about where you know there can be an escalation during the menopausal time most common types and differentiated by duration frequency location severity and quality of pain yeah OK, I'm, I'm going to skip that. Uh, and this is again, you know, which we, we, we discuss about, you know, more than 15 days a month for more than three months is a uh, chronic migraine. And in that you need to have eight days of uh, migraine days, actual migraine days, full fledged migraine days. So so that will uh, categorize uh, chronic migraine. So it can be with or without medication, obvious tension headaches. As I said, it's, it's a featureless. It, it is almost always bilateral. Um, it can last uh, from you know a few hours to seven days or even more. Um, and, and and migraine and tension headache coexist. You know, so as you can see, 30 minutes up to seven days, and uh, they can have a you know some of the um, a mild and moderate intensity. It can be non-pulsating. And no more than one of photophobia and phonophobia. So you can still have a photophobia and phonophobia with some of the uh, trigeminal headaches. So this is a chart and a highlighting cluster headache, paroxysmal hemicrania, sangd and suna. So sangd is short lasting unilateral neurology form headache with conjunctival tearing. Whereas the suna is short lasting unilateral neurology form headache uh, with autonomy features. So in the classic headache, you can see is a predominantly male thing, three to one, okay? And paroxysm of hemicrania equal, whereas in Sankt and Suna, it's slightly male pre uh, preponderance. Uh, the quality in a classic headache, sharp, stabbing, very severe. Usually it is V1, around the eye. So if, if they uh, show, ask any of the trigeminal autonomic cephalology pain, where is your maximum pain? This is how they hold the hand around the eye and periorbitally, retroorbitally. Sometimes they say somebody piercing through my eye. So eye is the focus of trigeminal autonomic cephalalgias. Okay, whereas trigeminal neuralgia, it is not the eye. It is a V2 and V1, the maxillary and mandibular. Okay, now um, the attack frequency, look at that. One to eight attacks in a, in, in, in a day and, and the timing is 30 to 30 minutes up to 180 minutes. Some books will say 15 minutes up to 180. Then comes the paroxysm of hemicrina, which is also unilateral. It is two minutes up to 30 minutes. So you can see there is a slow, small overlap there. But look at the frequency. The paroxysm of hemicrina occurs many times a day, 20 times, whereas cluster headache, either once a day or one every other day, up to eight times a day. And cluster headache has, has got a a predilection to occur predominantly at night time. If, if somebody wakes up at night time, you need to exclude cluster headache. But there is a dictum in medicine: common things are common. 
migraine patients can also have nocturnal attacks, particularly if they have been struggling from migraine for a while. Now, look at that Sang Tansuna. You can get up to 100 attacks in a day, and, and they last up from a minute up to five minutes. You know that the, your trigeminal neuralgia, a, a, a minute up to two minutes, and sometimes slightly more. The triggers, this is what you need to understand. Migraine can cause a trigger or, or hangover headache later in the evening or the next day, whereas classic headache, almost immediately, within minutes, up to half an hour, you will be having a very, very bad headache. Nitroglycerin can trigger my uh, classic headache. If you ask me if there is one extremely vital differentiating feature between migraine, very severe migraine, can look very much like classic headache, and there are times we have made a diagnosis of classic headache when it was just a migraine, okay? So if there is one differentiated feature, this is the most important thing, Ag agitation restlessness that is almost unheard in migraine, but very, very commonly seen with the classic headache. There will be pace up and down, they hit the against the wall with the fist or with the head, bang the, uh, the wall with the head, rock in the chair, they can't sit still because the intensity of the pain Normally, a patient with classic headache will say it is more than 10. Or the women who has given birth to children will say, oh, I can give birth to any number of children, but I can't suffer this pain. Uh, circadian rhythm present because they, they, they are more profound at night time, but it can present at day, day time as well. Oxygen uh, helps in, in a good majority of patients. Symmetry plan injection is absolutely brilliant. Uh, Intermittency, no effect. Whereas paroxysm and hemicrania and hemicrania continua are the two forms of trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia. Indomethacin is a godsend drug. You may have to go up to 75 mg three times a day, a massive dose, after having started 25 mg three times a day for three days, 50 mg three times a day for three days, and 75 mg three times a day to be continued to see if they are responded. And, and you, you should be wise enough uh, to, to uh, uh, consider lansoprazole. I, I normally go for lansoprazole rather than omeprazole uh, if you want to give in a patient uh, who may have a bit of dodgy tummy. I mean, mind you, I have seen most of the patient have tolerated it, but unfortunately I have had a very uh, good, um, easily in a kind of uh, um, control patient developing a gastric bleed and had to be stopped as well. Now, uh, migraine features, at, at nausea can be there in classic headache, photophobia and phonophobia can be there, and at less in the sun tansuna, yeah? It's not moving. Oh, yes. Treatment of migraine is it episodic or chronic, and you give a diary. Uh, I have got a diary I'm, I'm more than happy to share with you, but there are so many diaries uh, everywhere in, on the website. How many crystal clear headache-free days are there in a month? Uh, is it an episodic headache? The acute treatment hit early and hard, then stop. That is extremely vital. So it, educate the patient. You need to take as soon as the pain comes, not when the aura comes. The triptans are started only when the headache starts. Never ever educate the patient to take the uh, triptan when the aura comes. One of the reasons being, not all aura will develop into uh, migraine, and not all aura will give severe headaches as well. So detoxification is for the medication of use headache patient, and you always educate them. You will get worse for the uh, initial one to six weeks after that, you will be wondering why on earth I was taking all this medication. So that that six weeks, you need to patient needs to put up with it, or you know give a great oxygen block, or a Botox injection, or sometimes give one of the analgesics NSAIDs, which the patient hasn't used so far, as a back to back daily about two weeks. That's what I do. If the patient hasn't used naproxen, I give naproxen for those days so that they don't get the rebound headache. And, and a recommendation of lifestyle, treating your residual sleep disorder, restless legs, preventative strategy. Acute attacks don't take too early. As I told you, in, in aura, don't use triptans. Pain comes, triptan use. 
don't take too late. It will be you know, quite useless. Uh, hit hard, hit early, and then stop. Take early, but not during the aura. Painkillers and triptans abate the onset of headache. Antiemetics may help. Absorb and best taken ASAP. Uh, triptans not appropriate for effective in aura. No point continuing once allodynia, uh, that is simple touch uh, in experiencing as pain. So w one of the very, very effective drug you may know is a disposable aspirin, 900 milligram. Not just one tablet, not just 300, 900 milligram. I, I tell you, I've gone to hundreds of patients. Not a single patient had any tummy upset, not a single patient. Um, and, and if you're giving ibuprofen, I would prefer they let them take 600 milligram. Um, and soluble would be uh, better. You can use any antiemetics, domperidone, uh, metoclopamide, cyclosine, or dancetone, or buc uh, bucastem. Triptan, there are different forms of triptans. And there are seven types of uh, seven different uh, trip uh, triptans available. I'll come to that. There is a, another slide. So my four golden rules are: two to three liters of fluid a day, three regular meals a day. Avoid caffeine. Take decaf coffee tea. Avoid citrus fruits, citrus drinks, fizzy pops, and ensure eight hours of sleep. And never lie in. You lie in, you're bound to get headaches almost certainly. Okay, so so that is that is a, a, a never delay meal, never miss meal, and no brunch. And 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 if you lie in uh, during the weekends, or I don't have any work or study today, let me sleep for another hour or two. You wake up with a headache. In in my goodness. Uh, there's a question, Dr. Thomas. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, quite often, patients are on antidepressants, and they can interact with trip triptans and therefore risks of serotonin syndrome are they safe uh, i would say yes uh, uh, only reason i'm saying is it's a more of a theoretical risk after having treated many thousands of patients all these years i'm yet to see a single patient with a serotonin uh, syndrome uh, you, you need to the, the one thing you need to understand is uh, let them use triptans but let them not use the triptan that often. You, you want them about medication or use a day. So if you use say, two or three days yeah, in a week and, and, and doesn't use the rest of the days, I don't think it is going to cause any serotonin syndrome at all. So it's a theoretical risk. You know, uh, so many of you asked me this question. This is exactly what I told them. It's a theoretical risk in a clinical sense. No, it, is, it doesn't cause any harm. So this is again another chart showing cluster headache, Chronic paroxysm of hemicrania, which is another tax syndrome, episodic paroxysm of hemicrania, sung, stabbing headache, primary stabbing headache, normally respond to indomethacin, okay? And, and trigeminal neuralgia. You can see trigeminal neuralgia is slightly more common in, in women, so also stabbing headache. Um, the cluster headache is more, more in men, and, and the paroxysm of hemicrania, the chronic form, is more common in women. So the trigeminal neuralgia, they last from a second up to a minute or two. Stabbing headache is very short-lived and sung, as we discussed earlier, very, very short-lived uh, headache. And, and this is around, uh, you know, one or two minutes up to 30 minutes. Plus headache, we've gone through that. Attack frequency, look at that. Uh, it, TN can be many times a day. And again, stabbing headache many times a day. Sung this 30, 30 uh, attacks in an hour. So that is hell of a lot. So autonomy features are very characteristic for tax syndrome, trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia. Alcohol can precipitate some of the trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia. Indomethacin is the drug of choice for hemicrania continua, paroxysm hemicrania, and stabbing headaches. So this, this is something you need to look for you know, when you uh, want to do any further study or refer to uh, the hospital. So the Snoop T. So Red flags, systemic symptoms, fever, rash, trauma, stiff uh, neck, myalgia, weight loss. You need to refer to uh, or, 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 or even in a consider scan. Systemic illness, malignancy and AIDS, any headache, you know, you can't sit tight. You, know, you, you need to refer. Uh, neurologic symptoms of signs, confusion, impaired alertness, consciousness, focal signs, papilledema. So mind you, Migraine can give rise to sensory symptoms on one side or both sides. It can swap sides. So when, when sensory symptoms swap sides, 
is almost certainly is migraine. If you have a perioral numbness, it's almost migraine. So there are certain migraineous features you, know, you can you can uh, think about. Swapping sensory signs from one side to another is migraineous. Uh, onset sudden abrupt split second thunderclap headache is worrying. You need to exclude space lesion, aneurysm, AV malformation, uh, any CSF flow obstruction, things like that. Older the age group, more than 50, make sure you always do a CRP and ESR. Please do CRP as well because the sensitivity is very, and specificity is very high with doing both. The previous history of headache and the pattern change. Yeah, that is a concern, but I have to say majority of the headache changes in women around the uh, menopausal time, I always consider them as transform migraine. They're, 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 when the estrogen level goes down, the, the pattern of the headache changes. And they think, no, it is not my migraine, but it's still migraine. Obviously, you need to exclude other things. Triggered by Valsalva, like exertion of sexual activities, can uh, you need to be careful about. So these are the signs of uh, raised ICP. These are the signs of low ICP, and you need to be aware of GCA. GCA is a territory of a medical legal territory, because if you if you suspect GCA, and if you don't do the ESR CRP, if you don't do the temporal artery ultrasound, uh, if you don't uh, give the pregnancy loan, uh, if they lose vision, they can take you to court. So that's what I said. It's a, it's a medical legal kind of diagnosis. So this, I'm not going to read it out because it's very self-explanatory. You know all of it. And low pressure headache, usually the headache is more pronounced in the latter half of the day, or it's also called the second half of the day headache because the, the leak from the dura happens as you get straight and walk around. So migraine can be anywhere. You know, you can have abdominal migraine. Your migraine can you know, travel to different referred pain as well. Um, so cluster headache, always unilateral. It cannot be, it cannot be bilateral. Migraine can be unilateral or bilateral, okay? Tension headache is considered as always um, all over the head or bilateral. So these are rare headache syndromes. Um, hemicranial continuum, I would, I would not say is, is not that rare. I've made so many diagnoses of hemicranial continuum responding to intermethacin quite brilliantly. So, so this is sound, short-lasting unilateral neurology for headaches with congenital injection and tearing. And SUNA is short-lasting unilateral neurology from headache uh, with the cranial autonomy features. So there are different types of primary headaches which we, we don't have time to go through. So there is something called primary headache with exertion. It could be with any exertion, sexual activity, uh, playing uh, games, hockey. I had a, a patient I seen today uh, who played basketball, he had headache and, and visual disturbance, which actually prolonging each time he's playing to now up to about seven days, the, the, the pain and the visual symptoms. So I had to do a scan. I suspect that gentleman, young gentleman from Belgium, living in UK for the last uh, four years, could be having some focal lesions. Uh, when you have sick, a very severe uh, VPIs, always think about glaucoma as well. Uh, don't, don't forget, agitation is a classical feature of cluster headache, autonomy feature. Look at that, his, his eyes watering. So there are seven streptans. You know, I, I've got a, I mean, you, some of you may know, I've got a special liking for orodispersible solmitriptan and orodispersible resetriptan. This is five milligram, resetriptan 10 milligram. And, and it, they are a bit costly, but another two wonderful drugs are elitriptan, 40 milligram, and almotriptan, 12.5 uh, milligram. And I always give uh, a triptan with naproxen 500 milligram and always tell the patient to take the second triptan after two hours if your pain is still there, because you're killing the pain there and then. So that is an important advice. You tell the patient to take the second lot of triptan after two hours if the pain is still there. Can you use steroid? Some books say yes, but my worry is the moment you give steroid and if, if it helps them, they will have a tendency to go back to it very often. For that simple reason, I never ever you know, considered them and I haven't treated a single patient with a steroid. The generic and fast-acting sumatriptan, 
Um, I mean, you know the beta blockers are particularly metoprolol and propanolol, amitriptyline, nortriptyline, docilapine. I have to say that uh, docilapine is one of my favorite drugs, but you don't give it because it is a blacklisted or red flag drug. But uh, the red flag is purely because of the fact that it, if you take an overdose, uh, it, it can cause cardiac uh, arrhythmias. But if you take the same number of amitriptyline, that causes more damage. So, so for me, I'm very, very happy to prescribe docilapine. Docilapine is still used to buy uh, some of the psychiatrists. There the problem comes if they overdose, but not with the migraine patients. Gabapendi was previously in the NICE guideline. Now it is taken out. But if you have lost all other options, if you want to try, you, you know what? I tend not to give weight gaining drugs. Gabapendi and pregabalin are weight gainers. Amitriptyline is a weight gainer. But as long as you uh, keep the dose low and, and for a short term, and pisotifin, I, I, I don't use. Uh, if I could use politely the word, it is a useless drug. Uh, it causes weight gain and it cause, makes you sleepy. It causes mood changes, but it may be good drug in children uh, below the age of 16. Unusual uh, treatment, Botox injection. I'm a big fan of Botox, uh, great oxyplenar block. Methicide is now taken out of the shelf uh, in UK. Um, uh, Lysinopril can be used. Uh, some of the natural remedies, as you can see there. So this is a slide which uh, I, I all I, I want you to all go through it. It's a it, it's a wonderful slide. They're telling about you know the lifestyle, the the beta blockers, certain antagonists, and then the tricyclics, SNRI. One of my other favorite drug is venlafaxine. Venlafaxine. Tell the patient is is an anti-anxiety, antidepressant, mood stabilizer, but it has got a wonderful um, effect on migraine. I, I've got so many patients who have uh, either cured or hugely better with uh, venlafaxine. While prayed, uh, preferably in men, in women you can use it, but you need to counsel them. You need to fill the form. Tupramid is a wonderful drug, but you need to choose very cleverly and carefully, giving the side effects. If you give Tupramid, you need to tell them. Uh, and if they are on and uh, contraceptive pill, uh, they, they need to use other contraceptive measures. Um, calcium channel blocker, flunaracin is a wonder drug. Uh, it is uh, not used in this country. I use it hell of a lot. Uh, it's a specially solely prescribed drug. It's a, it, 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 it's, it, I cure my sister's migraine with this one. It's a wonderful drug. Uh, it, it's a 5 to 10 milligram at night time. Uh, I give it for three months and re-prescribe. Uh, it, 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 it's a great drug. It's absolutely great. It's, it, it has got a weight gaining property though. Uh, you have with the candesartan, no side effects whatsoever. I don't bother about a headache because, uh, you know, almost everybody tolerate it. Um, lysinopril, I, I, I use it very, very rarely only. And this, this is a new, nice uh, approved drugs, the, the injectables. In that eptinizumab, the first one is an IV preparation. They have pitched the price a bit low. Uh, because the patient needs to come into the hospital. That's why they have done that. But this subcutaneous injection the patients uh, take themselves every four weeks is a wonder drug. And and somebody with uh, 20 years of migraine completely cured. Um, so botulinum toxin, melatonin uh, can be used in migraine, but more uh, uh, commonly used in uh, cluster headaches. Memantin uh, has some evidence. Uh, great oxygen block, as I said. Uh, there are some new neuromodulation, non-invasive vagus nerve stimulation, gamma core, external trigeminal nerve stimulation, kephali, uh, symbol uh, TMS, the, the symbol pulse trans uh, cranial magnetic stimulation, and then you have the riboflavin and coenzyme Q10. Uh, if the patient asks, I ask them, you can take it, but I, I, I don't normally tend to prescribe. Don't forget about the giant cell arthritis, the terminal arthritis. And there is a pathway for that with jaw claudication, artery pain, tenderness, uh, uh, diminished pulsation, history of uh, polymyalgia rheumatica, ESR in normal in 10%, therefore check the, uh, the CRP as well. <clears throat> Common misdiagnosis, cervicogenic headache. There's always a, a, a question um, you, you ask and, and patients ask, well, migraine can lead to neck pain. Neck pain can, so psychogenic headache can lead to migraine. So it is it, a kind of a um, chicken and egg situation. So, so you, you you need to know 
migraine can cause uh, neck pain. The very first pain of a migraine can start from the neck. Cervicogenic pain, when it, it, it kind of escalates or exacerbates, can lead on to the migraine as well. So chronic tension type headache, eye strain, dental problem, TMJ dysfunction, sinus headache, hypertensive headaches. When to refer? Any secondary headache suspected. Any red flag suspected. Increasing crescendo headaches in spite of treatment. Always check if the patient is overusing the painkiller. Tried already three to four prophylactics like beta blocker, tricyclic antidepressant, tupramate, candesartan. You should refer. But you need to understand when you refer kindly, put in a given propanolol at a dose of this for this many uh, days or weeks. Because if you under treat, under treat from the dose perspective, duration perspective, it is not a proper trial. Candesartan should go up to 16. To permit normally, I, uh, I aim between 50 to uh, 100 milligram uh, tricyclic. I mean, typically you can go from 10 to 50, very rarely above that. Uh, Dosilipin, you can go up from 25 to 75 milligram. Beta blockers, the commonest beta blocker I use is propan, so metoprolol, because I feel metoprolol has got a better side effect profile. I'm not going to dwell on it. Any medication which is taken more than 50, uh, 10 days in a month can give rise to medication obvious a day. The, the nasty one, which I hate patients taking, uh, um, is uh, codeine containing preparation. I, I hate anybody. I, I'm very proud to say I've treated many thousands of patients. Not a single patient takes codeine. Um, that is again about medication obvious a day. Kindly read that. This is something, a huge amount of patients out there. You need to. Uh, look after them. Uh, all primary headaches, uh, important diagnosis not to miss, primary headaches, uh, subarachnoid bleed, vascular, you know, kind of stroke, dissection, venous sinus thrombosis, IAH, previously known as BIH, giant cell arthritis, raised and low pressure, and, and some of the mimics. You can get uh, some association with pituitary adenoma and sunctan cluster headache. So I'm, I'm going to just uh, quickly go through this patient. This patient, 20 year old, sorry, 40, 54 year old over the uh, 20 years had had severe intermittent headaches characterized by intense boring pain on one side of his head. When they strike, the attacks typically occur several times a day. They last between 15 minutes up to one hour. He has seen several doctors, including headache specialists with little or no improvement. None of the various uh, medications have uh, tried help them. So what are the questions you need to ask? Have they got any cranial autonomy features? Because it's one-sided, it, it, it is many times a day, and, and 15 minutes up to one hour. So the, the diagnosis here is cluster headache. And the treatment is subcutaneous tryptan. You can give high flow oxygen. Prednisolone can be given. Um, and I give great oxygen block with absolutely brilliant effect in class A headache patients. And you give verapamil with monitoring the ECG, lithium can be used, tupramate can be used, and melatonin. Botox injection, um, I mean, when the CGRP antagonists have come into light, the Botox it, it, it has taken a slightly you know, backward uh, seed, but still there are certain patients, they, they find Botox absolutely brilliant. But if they haven't had uh, less than 30% reduction in headache, you need to discontinue that after two cycles. So these are where the injections are given, the Botox injection. Um, 31 injections are given, a total of 155 units. And uh, I'm not going into the details. You know, normally what I tend to use is, you know, um, you know, one of the beta blockers uh, or um, amitriptyline. Uh, you can also use the, the sertraline. Um, or, or venlafaxine as uh, um, SSRIs can be used. Venlafaxine, as I said, is a, is a wonderful drug. Uh, Metoprolol is my favorite drug. Anti-epileptic is tupramate, sodium valproate. Uh, I go up to this dose, not more than that, even though it is recommended. You always worry about the mood. Weight, uh, patient can lose tremendous amount of weight. Each trial of the beta blockers should be given, sorry, of the, of the preventatives should be given for three months, minimum three months. 
So important pitfalls, not taking proper history, more than one type of headache, uh, and failure to recognize the secondary headache, like medication obvious headache, and don't ever think that I have to have it done a normal CT, everything is done dusted. But some of the patients, they, they will find that uh, their headache gets hugely better once they know their headache is uh, good. Migraine with aura and stroke. Yeah, there is a uh, um, relation to migraine with aura and stroke. So you need to be careful with those kind of patients prescribing um, uh, H uh, HRT and contraceptive pills as well. So this is a newer one, which is uh, the CGRP antagonist. Erendomab, it, it, it binds to the CGRP receptor, whereas it, it binds to the CGRP ligand protein and block the receptor. So there are three of them, which we use quite a lot. We haven't used the, the IV preparation where the patient needs to come into the hospital. And this, uh, you may have heard about Remigipan, Vidura, which is a breakthrough medication. It's a bit costly now. Hopefully, it, it will come down in the, in the future. It is a drug used both for acute attacks and prevention. And the charm about this is it doesn't affect the coronary arteries, whereas the triptan, it can affect the coronary arteries. So they are under the group called GPAN. There is DTANS. Currently, only one DTAN is being in a kind of a, a process, less meditan. It's an acute treatment. It is another new class of medication like triptans and GPANs, but different, effective as a triptan, very different from the triptan. So uh, this is a dose for acute treatment, 75 milligram. For episodic migraine, it can be given 75 milligram once daily on alternate days. Points to take home, if a patient has got anxiety or depression, treat that first. Your headache will never get better. I'm very confident about that. Lifestyle measures always highlight. Medication obvious headache, let them chart it. Headache diary is very important. Duration of prophylaxis uh, is extremely important. Three weeks, uh, uh, sorry, three months is the minimum. Great oxygen nerve injection is wonderful. Botox injection can help. CGRP antagonist is a big breakthrough. GPANS, the Remigipan or Vidura is, is extremely important. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I know I have just uh, reached time. Uh, I will just, uh, if anybody wants to write, I mean, I, I, will, I will finish this in 10 minutes. There are quite a few cases. Um, so so I, I will try to answer as much questions at the end, but let's let's quickly go through that. Why don't you answer, why don't you write down by the side in the answer to each cases? 37 year old male, been to Florida a week ago, sudden onset of one sided uh, pain on the left side. Then periorbital frontal pain radiated to the neck. Moderate constant pain with throbbing. Neck and facial pain remain unilateral. Presented with the unilateral right side of sensory symptoms and clumsiness with waxing and waning. Patient seen in a &E. The junior doctor thought there may be a possible small pupil on the left side. Any thoughts? Okay, Sabine, thanks. Any thoughts? Let me give you a clue. Patient has been to a roller coaster ride in Florida. So this is a form of se secondary headache. Uh, no, uh, it, it is not vestibular uh, because uh, uh, obviously, uh, are there any vestibular symptoms? No, th there are no, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, dizziness, vertigo, or unsteadiness there mentioned. So if I give uh, not exactly aneurysm, uh, it is something to do with the carotid artery. What happened to the carotid artery? If the carotid artery is affected, you can have uh, uh, the cervical sympathetic, which is in the carotid sheath, can get damaged and it get uh, horners or, or meiosis or droopy eyes. So this is a carotid artery dissection. So what is this patient got? 68 year old GP referred with headaches, Corey increased uh, ICP, intermittent worsen lying flat. Patient has had weight loss, anorexia, occasional night sweats, mild aches and stiffness, two months, neck and shoulders and hip, left hip. Recently saw dentist diagnosed TNJ dysfunction.
Any takers? Yes. Why you say so? Yes, yes, well done, well done. So uh, uh, when when the temple arteries are uh, you know looked at, the right temple artery was craggy. Oh, well done, well done. There's so many answers. So never ever forget about CRP. And uh, you all know the temple artery ultrasound gives a halo sign. And if you have done the, the temple artery ultrasound within 24 hours of starting uh, at the steroid, you can still be positive. So any takers on this patient, 67 year old female, lifelong severe migraine, now presenting with right orbital pain and photophobia, different to normal migraine, more pervasive. Now red eye and blurred vision and nausea vomiting. Wonderful. Whoever said glaucoma uh, is, is the right answer. So, so it's a VPI. Always uh, think about glaucoma. Well done. And next patient. Sorry, next. Oh, oh, what happened? What did I do wrong? Can you help me? Did I? Glaucoma. OK. So how do I go? Is it? Here, yeah. Oh, oh. Um, okay, so 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 I hope you can see the slides there. Are we going to the next one? Case four. Twenty one year old playing squash, odd sensation, something giving way in the head, followed by unilateral headache. Within one year, bilateral and having spread to back of the head and neck. Photophobia, nausea, vomiting. Two months ago, admitted to A&E for severe right side headache associated with vomiting and photophobia. Diagnosis: migraine after negative CT and LP. On examination, patient has got uh, neck rigidity, photophobia, and retinal hemorrhage. Diagnosis: Yes, very good. So, what 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 was wrong two months ago? Can you tell me what happened two months ago? It is a subarachnoid bleed. But what happened two months ago? So that is what we call as a sentinel bleed. It is a show of blood, but you know it can be negative CT and negative LP because uh, there are not many RBCs to to make that positive. Yeah, this is called sentinel headache or sentinel bleed. So so I, I'm I'm going to share all these slides. So so please uh, don't uh, worry. So 24 four year old female with diffuse headache, initially left ear, then left to temporal uh, to bilateral. Felt unwell and reduced appetite on OCP, oral contraceptive pill, and a smoker. Drowsy for two days. Present to any with a seizure. No focal neurology. Cranless normal. No papilledema. CT negative. Any diagnosis? I'll give you a clue. Young female, smoker, oral contraceptive pill, and now presenting with uh, um, presenting with a seizure. Yes, CVT. Wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. You can see uh, you can see the flow in in this uh, 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 transverse sinus. This is completely blocked. So, 67 year old lady, two month history of uh, progressive intermittent frequent headaches, bilateral uh, frontal moderate headache, throbbing, never wakes up at night time, mild phonophobia, nausea, no increase with uh, uh, cough, no not postural, passes to migraine, on examination normal. I think it's very tough for you because what I, I was just uh, trying to highlight here is uh, even with uh, uh, migraine features or tension time headache features, you can still get a tumor there. So this patient uh, never woke up at night time but had a massive uh, tumor. So so never ever think all, all, all you know kind of old school teach of uh, you have to wake up at night is only um, kind of uh, um, highlight of uh, Tumors. You, you, you can have uh, patients with tumors without headache, uh, no nocturnal headache. Okay. Um, 32 year old lady with normal headaches for four months. Now, mild and generalized headaches described as achy, became more frequent and intense. Last two months, she had a constant headache, occasional blurry vision. Makes her wonder if her problem is migraine with aura. 
uh, she can, she learned uh, about uh, on the online headache information side. She's on medication for acne, and the CT scan of the head showed no abnormalities. So, so the catch is young lady in in a fertile uh, period uh, time. Um, she's on medication for acne. So, can anybody anybody in a kind of give any clue to that? So essentially, the acne medications, the, uh, the, the doxycycline or retinoids, or vitamin A, can give rise to IIH uh, even without a body habitus of uh, being quite big. A psychology student, previously healthy, right eye pain, worst headache ever, thunderclap headache, like a lightning, burning sensation, right and then move to left nausea dizzy photophobia uh, pain lasted for 90 minutes jesus 15 when they arrive the hospital no motor weakness and this is the this is the kind of cerebellar bleed when we looked a bit more closely into it there was a arterial venous malformation there that has bled and there was a reason for that uh, you can see there there that is the arterial venous malformation so that has been um treated um, there you go so primary thunderclap headache so there is an entity called primary thunderclap headache when you have excluded all of the secondary causes so these are the secondary causes of thunderclap headaches and I, again i am i'm sharing the slides with you so 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 we we have gone through that um so if you have time, we, 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 we can, I will, I will just sit quiet and you read and write the, 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 the answers by the side. 30 year old lady with experience in headaches at, uh, at the age of 20 years. At that stage, migraine attacks usually begin one day prior to the onset of menstrual bleeding and last for three to five days. She was able to treat them with anodine extra. Her headaches increased in frequency over the last 10 years. While the headaches still responded to anodine extra, she gradually had to increase the use of the medication. She would have, she, she would make the medication to prevent a bad headache from occurring. Uh, by early 30s, uh, missed work due to headaches, sleep pattern gradually became more disrupted. She began to notice. Um, Yes, yes, it is a medication overuse headache or drug induced headache. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So that is a question you need to ask. How many days of uh, painkillers you used in a month? How do you manage them? Um, well, you know, make it with medication overuse headache. Um, I mean, obviously, you need to stop the offending drug, uh, give another analgesia to to uh, have any rebound headaches. There are two school of thought. One is to taper them slowly. And there is to withdraw it abruptly. I'm I'm of the second uh, option uh, because the patient needs to know. You know how many times patients come back and told you have asked me to stop the the, the overuse of medication. I am much better now. And you need to tell the patient you will struggle for a, a, a week up to six weeks. So this is a patient uh, who has a child, uh, but has. One problem. She's a long history of chronic headache, and barely able to control the multiple migraine and both uh, preventive and abortive medication. She's worried that it may not be safe to take these medications for a developing fetus. So she wants to have a child. She wonders which medications are safe in the pregnancy, how we can weed off ones that that aren't. And she also wonders if there are any treatments she can use the hydro control while she gets pregnant and during pregnancy. What's your advice? What is abortion and preventive medications? What is particularly concerned about is sumatriptan injections? Okay, so so I'm I'm going to uh, unfortunately none of the medications are safe. Paracetamol can be used, uh, aspirin shouldn't be used, uh, um, and uh, NSAIDs as well. You can use codeine uh, in pregnancy. So so the only time I use I allow my headache patients to use uh, codeine is in pregnancy. Not 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 any other time because the options are limited. You can take sumatriptan. The pregnancy registry uh, safety is, is reasonably good for sumatriptan, but try to avoid uh, the first trimester, please.
OK, sorry, you know, it, it has gone through quickly. So so you, they, they are all the uh, the various uh, medications. So th these are the antiemetics and uh, these are the preventive medications as per the safety ratio by Anne McGregor. Do I stop the triptans? Uh, I would I wouldn't give the triptan during the first trimester, but second trimester and third trimester, you can still use it. So after sumatriptan, resetriptan pregnancy registries is reasonably robust. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, moving to finish the slides as much as I can. So this is a patient with a left side of headache, right? And uh, mild to moderate severe, left side of the forehead and temporal region, back of the head and neck, all left-sided, dull continuous pressure. The pain is occasionally associated with nausea and photophobia. Numerous times per day, pain is worsened, becoming sharp and stabbing several times at a time, and radiating from the left temporal to the left eye. On one occasion, some occasion, these chaps and jolts were associated with tearing of the from the left eye. Michelle had no relief with the various over-the-counter medication with the exception of naproxen, which uh, achieved a minimal improvement of the dull continuous pain. So that is a giveaway, you know, th that naproxen did something. She had been treated with two courses of oral antibodies without help, and the CT sinus is normal. Triptans, uh, trials of uh, sumatriptan, other triptans, might leave no effect, examination normal. So what is the diagnosis? Let me see if uh, there was some use in my uh, lecture. So it is one-sided many times a day with waxing and waning, chaps and jolt. And I think the clinch here is the tearing of the eye. There is watering of the eye. Okay. There is watering of the cluster. Well, cluster, you know, because it is throughout the day, throughout the day. Hemicrania continua. No, you're right. Hemicrania continua. Hemicrania continua. The reason I say cluster, it is not cluster headache is, it's a female, but you can get in female, but uh, it is usually lasts for about, um, you know, 30 minutes up to three hours. But here it, it says uh, continuous left side of pain with waxing and veining or japs and jolt. That is typical of hemicrania continua. So this lady I woke up one day with a severe headache. Headaches were now new to her. She has no uh, history of headaches in the past, nor did she have family history. Yet since that day, Sarah had a daily headache, three months, and felt the pain throughout her entire head. The pain is better in the morning and worse as the day goes on. She also reports that the pain improves when she's lying down. So that is it. these two sentences are the catch. Pain is better in the morning and worse as the day goes on. Low pressure headache, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so, so she reports the pain improves when lying down. So, so if you want to ask about low pressure headache, ask when you lie down, does the pain go away immediately within minutes? And as soon as you stand stand up, does the pain come on immediately within minutes? Then you clinch the diagnosis. So Karen is a 30-year-old migrainer, uh, initially with her menstrual cycles, but lately more frequent with five attacks in a month. Each attack lasts two to three days. She was prescribed oral contraceptive pill eight months ago. She felt her migraines are getting more severe and frequent. She has recently had an attack of visual aura and sensory disturbance on one side. The attack also associated with slurred speech and expressive dysphagia. These symptoms came on gradually over five minutes, lasted an hour. She's very worried after having done a Google search of her symptoms. She's asking, is it a stroke or a TIA? Do I need a scan? Can she take any other safer pills? How would you manage her menstrually associated headaches? And when she finds particularly, dis which she finds particularly disabling due to this severe pain. Is it a stroke? Well, potentially possible, isn't it? 30 year old, uh, you know, definitely there is aura symptoms, has been oral contraceptive pill, but we don't know the patient has got other, as I said, multiple risk factors. 
So it could still be a magnosora, not a stroke. So this is what I'm trying to say. You need to quantify the comorbidities or other vascular risk factors and then extrapolate the odds ratio, the risk ratio, and, and counsel the patient. I mean, if the patient doesn't have any, any kind of various other vascular risk factors, I would still counsel the patient. I would be prepared to give. This patient possibly has had a scan and was normal. I think we are almost uh, nearly there. Uh, there may be one more uh, case and we are done, yeah? So for, no, no, actually this is this is one we, we did in the initial talk. So, so I think that's it probably. I, I'm, I'm sorry it, it, it prolonged for a little while longer, but I am I am here to, to go through your, let me see the chat box, you know, and I, I think that's the end of the slide, yeah. Um, Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Um, so if anyone's got any questions, I, I know we've we've run over slightly um, there, so apologies for that. If you have any questions, if you want to take yourself off mute and ask Dr. Thomas now, um, we'll try and wrap up pretty uh, pretty quick yeah. um, so we can get off. Um, I have popped in the chat box a link to our survey. If you haven't already done so, if you wouldn't mind just completing that, it should only take a, a, a couple of minutes. Um, and like Dr. Thomas said, we will be sending out the slides to you over the next couple of days. I'll send them out with CPD certificates and also a recording of the session. Um, so you should have have all of that there for reference. Um, so is there any questions in the, the chat function that you'd like to address, Dr. Thomas? Sorry. I have to say that the headache is such a, a, a vast topic. You know, you can talk on women and migraine. You can talk on, you know, the preventive medication or its own. You can talk on acute my management of migraine. So, so uh, a couple of things uh, comes to my mind when you are, uh, you know, typing your questions, or, or you can even uh, ask uh, 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 through the audio if you want to through the microphone. Uh, you need to understand that uh, it is such a common thing. I'm sure, you know, uh, out of uh, the, 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 all the gel practitioners uh, listening to it, probably three fourth of the of you will be having migraines. You know, I, I have suffered from migraine. My triggers are caffeine, lack of sleep, stress, uh, guaranteed, and 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 delayed meal, delayed meal, or, or missing meal. Yes, please. Hi, could I ask? Do you have a favorite trip tan, and what is that trip tan? You, you know, that's a, such a wonderful question. Uh, the cheapest tryptan, as you know, is a general. I mean, is is a summer tryptan. But if you, if I have a bad migraine and I need a tryptan, I probably will go for Almo tryptan, which is a new drug, 12.5 milligram. It is possibly one of the most effective, least side effect drug. Uh, uh, but easy to use would be the, the oral dispersible one, uh, the Solmi tryptan, 5 milligram or resetriptan 10 milligram. The advantage over there is it is more fast reacting. Why? Because you're putting the, uh, the tablet under the tongue, it melts and within five to 10 minutes, you get the benefit. Whereas you, when you take something orally, it is anything between half an hour to an hour, the effect comes. So, so after almotriptan, elitriptan is a wonderful drug, uh, which is again a costly drug. It is a 40 milligram tablet. And you can uh, uh, repeat another 40 milligram after two hours. So, so as I told you in my initial talk, when you ask, a, when you give a patients a triptan, always tell them if your pain hasn't gone away, it hasn't killed off, take a second triptan, same dose, after two hours. And at that time, you don't need to say you take along with uh, naproxen, but the very first time. Any triptan with naproxen will be absolutely wonderful than you giving naproxen or triptan alone. And, and giving another triptan after two hours, usually those patients who had had their headaches for two days to five days will say, oh, you know what? After I tried that, the headache has gone away in, in 12 hours or 24 hours. And another wonderful drug is uh, dispersible aspirin. Take three tablets, put in water. When it effervescents, mix it, drink it one of the most effective drug under the sun for acute attacks. Right, 
right okay it looks as though um all the questions have been answered then um so if we were off at the session thank you dr thomas for for, for joining us this evening i mean you know you, you, you know recently we have got this advice and guidance and and uh, obviously you know it may not come to me it depends on who is on call consultant and we we are trying to uh, do the advice and guidance uh, as much as we can you know what i'm going to email wiki tomorrow as something i prepared for advice and guidance it's a very very brief summary of uh, uh, you know migraine treatment very brief summary that's a very useful one tool you can keep that with you yeah i'll, I'll email it to wiki tomorrow and and, and uh, when you're seeing a migraine patient you, you can go through that very very briefly it, it, it it's a kind of nutshell of uh, what do you need to talk to them and what you can treat with and uh, that'll be good I, I, I will i will send it to her okay that that's great so i'll if once you've once you've sent that over um i'll send that out with cpd certificates and the recording and slides um so thank you everyone for attending this evening um like i said we've finished the lectures now until september and um, we'll be in touch to let you know what our next um our next lecture is going to be hopefully it'll be mel that will be messaging you um she'll be taking back over the the, the lectures from September. Um, so thank you, Dr. Thomas, and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.